Well guys, how about that eclipse? <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> I felt like when I did some Instagram stories about how I was faring under the eclipse, and I think I did an Instagram post as well, you know, as with everything, it was sort of a mixed bag. There were some people that were also seeming to get kind of pummeled energetically by it, and then there were some people who seemed to have very um, positive eclipse viewing experiences, which if you were in the path of totality, that's amazing. Also, I started, I was just sort of like, the way it took over the popular psyche was really overwhelming, honestly. Um, I guess that's what humans do with stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, all in all, interesting experience. The way that the eclipse was aspecting my natal chart was so intense. It was basically directly opposed within half a degree of my ascendant in the first house. And so I know that that's like a lot of astrology, blah, blah, blah. But basically, I went through like without getting too personal, just like a, a really big crisis of self and belief and trust in myself. Uh, yeah, it was a lot. And the funny thing is, like, by the next day, a lot of that in the most intense energy had really lifted for me. But we'll get into a little bit more of that because astrology related things are part of this video. August favorites always a joyful time for me because it means we're it's the last like real month of summer which is not my favorite season although I must say I feel like I've tolerated it relatively well this year for whatever reason but I'm still exceptionally excited for fall very excitingly we'll just get this out of the way at the beginning yesterday I announced the launch of L'Amour et la Musique moving to Patreon <laughs> I made a whole video giving you sort of a little intro to what that's about, what it means. It doesn't change anything about my normal content on here, but if you would like to hear more about that, please check out that video and head over to my Patreon homepage to think about supporting La More La Musique in a donation-based way. So August favorites, it's a pretty decent mix of beauty, lifestyle, really good music this month. It was probably like the best music month for me of 2017 so far just in terms of how this the music that I found um, struck me and and how it felt and things like that so there'll be some good playlists accompanying this video let's start with beauty I actually meant to mention this product so I didn't do a June favorites I did a June and July favorites and I meant to mention this in that and it's the Au Naturel uh, pink champagne blush which came in the Beauty Heroes Elective Makeup Box. By the way, they're getting ready to do another one of those. I haven't gotten it to test yet, but I do know what's in it, and yeah, it's very exciting. It's a brand I think a lot of people will be really interested in. But this product, I use this term a lot, it was sort of like a sleeper hit for me from that makeup box. I thought I was gonna like the lip color best. I haven't gotten as much use out of the lip color yet, just because I think it's very, very fall appropriate but this is what the blush looks like. So to me, it's been quite literally a dead ringer for NARS Orgasm, which is a blush I used to wear like when Sex and the City was popular basically, or like in that time frame, kind of like mid late 2000s, I was wearing a lot of NARS blushes. I really didn't think I was gonna like this as much as I did because I tend to go very rosy in the cheeks naturally. I have a lot of pink undertones in my skin and so blush is one of my most challenging makeup products to get right. This is like an all-in-one sort of product for me. I usually will forego bronzer and highlighter and just do a light dusting of this on my cheeks and it's just a sort of a perfect summertime flush and so I've been really really liking it. I know they do a lot of other colors um, in this range. I'm curious about others and you know I've heard mixed things about the packaging. For me the way I do it is just kind of how I showed you. I pump a little bit out on my hand and swirl my brush in it as opposed to putting directly on the brush and then on my face I like to have a little more control and yeah it just it blends really beautifully so I've been loving that makeup wipe needed to happen. Okay next in beauty I wanted to mention these I think I did mention them in my summer beauty recommendations video but they're the Tatcha Abora Toragami Japanese beauty papers. I am quite shocked with how much I ended up liking these this summer. They're, you know, I used to use kind of like those 
drugstore blotting papers when I was in high school even though I didn't have oily skin the same way I used to use a CoverGirl compact powder compact in high school I feel like every high school girl in the 90s did that these are gorgeous you guys I I've tried touch of skincare and I truthfully am not that impressed but these papers are just I don't want to demo it because I think it's really gross actually when people demo these on camera they get all like oily and greasy but they're very very like luxe and beautiful and if I need to refresh my makeup at the end of the day and like day to night makeup these are like perfect i would actually think these would be kind of a nice little luxury uh splurge in the fall sephora uh, beauty insider sale that's coming up or whatever okay my color of august was definitely cobalt blue i've been sort of doing a pop of color with cobalt blue on my channel for a couple of years now but in particular this cobalt blue in the viseart cool mattes this blue shadow smudged into this Veg Up Cobalt Blue liner pen, or it's like a liquid liner. This was a gift from my Italian subscriber Mickey in her beautiful Tuscan Eco Beauty Boutique. I did a whole video actually demoing a lot of the products that she sent overseas for me hand delivered by a friend of hers. So yes, and then before getting that, I did also have this Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Pencil in the color Chaos, which is also in the same color family. This I like smudged out on the lower lash line with no liner on the top lid, but I actually like this paired with like a pewtery sort of shadow on the lid. And for the liquid liner, I really liked doing a cobalt blue wing with the Viseart shadow pressed in. And now I probably will not wear these colors until next summer. I don't, cobalt blue to me is a very summertime color. Okay, for lips, my favorite lip combination, oh, I'm like blanking. This could have even been my lip combination from June and July favorites. If it is, I'm sorry, but it's really what I've been wearing. Um, Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk as a lip liner with RMS Sacred over top. Yeah, I'm almost sure this was my June and July favorite lip combo too. It's actually what I'm wearing today. It's just a really, really perfect, easy, everyday lip color if I don't want to do something bold during the day. I just, this color I love. I also have been loving this on my cheeks. Something else that is sort of analogous to that combination is the Glossier Matte Lip Tint in Crush. You know, I think I might be one of the only people that actually likes these. I don't hear many people talking about them or being that interested in them. I actually really like them. Although I, I do have to say, I wasn't sure I was going to keep this particular one because I wasn't sure I liked the color, but... I've been testing it out a little bit more this month and I think I do really quite like it. In fact, if I do sacred and lip cheat in the morning and I don't want to take this glass pot around, this is actually a really nice touch up because they're they're pretty similar actually, I'll show you. Sacred has a little bit more like watermelon to it, but that's sacred and that's Glossier Crush. No skincare favorites this month because I I am testing a few new things, but uh, not long enough to have them be favorites. Um, August Beauty Heroes is excellent. I will be, it was a new product, two new products to me. That review will be coming next week. And then a few other new things, but it's too soon to tell. I do have a hair care duo I could tell you about. They're not new, but I haven't talked about them in a while. And when I bring out kind of Hall of Fame products to me that I haven't talked about in a while. People seem to appreciate the reiteration of that. Like two hair care products that I think are just exceptional on my hair. Now keep in mind, hair is so individual. So it's like mascara. I feel like you're just gonna have to kind of do your own trial and error. I can, on I can only tell you what works really well for me. And it's the Evolve Age Ultra Shine Moisture Shampoo and Conditioner. I have been using these for three or four years at this point, and of everything I cycle in and out of, I always want to have these in my shower because they perform really close to conventional hair care products. The shampoo really gets my hair clean with not a ton of effort, which is saying a lot, I think. Um, and the conditioner, you need such a small amount to get just like a really nice uh, moisturized effect at the end of the hair. 
so I really recommend these. I think I got these on Derm Store. I know that they carry the brand. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I guess it's sort of like a product update, but something I have really been loving this summer. It's kind of a really nice scent for summer. The Ellis Brooklyn Excellent Body Milk in the scent Fable. I actually fell in love with this product last summer, I remember, because I tested it for the first time at Credo when I was in New York for Indie Beauty Expo, which I obviously did not go to this year. I was planning on it and other stuff happened. So I've had this product for, I think I got it in the fall VIB sale or like late fall. And I really tried to make a dent in it uh, this summer. And my favorite way to use it is to take an unscented oil that I'm trying to get through. Oh, it smells so, so good. It's almost like a first layer of body fragrance that really lingers on the skin. I've been taking either my Jordan Samuel Etoile oil or One Love Organics Love Springs Eternal. These are two totally unscented face oils that I'm just not getting through as expediently as I wanted to. So I'll take a dropper full in a small amount of lotion, create like an emulsion and moisturize that way. That's my favorite way to use body oils in combination with a, a lotion to create that sort of emulsion. It extends the life of an oil, extends the life of your lotion and it's really moisturizing. I prefer that method to what everyone else seems to enjoy doing, which is getting out of the shower with wet skin and putting oil on. That just does not work for me. So I prefer to create that kind of moisture oil combo with a lotion, which already has uh, like usually water in it. Why don't we now move into a couple of lifestyle things. I wanted to mention my new favorite chocolate brand. I may have told you guys about this brand another time yeah i think i did a couple favorites videos ago it was a different bar it's the brand original beans and this is the piura porcelana 75 percent peruvian chocolate bar i think before i had shown there's like an 85 or an 88 percent bar and i decided to try this one there's a little boutique on beacon hill that carries all of these artisanal chocolate brands that I had never heard of like above and beyond what Whole Foods carries and I've been like slowly trying different brands and this is like one of my favorite discoveries. This bar is excellent. I think I like the darker one a tiny bit more but I love like super dark bitter chocolate. Amazing. If you can get your hands on this brand I would highly recommend. Okay then I'm going to quickly mention the Alchemist. I believe I showed this in passing in a previous video, but I have been reading it this month. It's really good timing given what I went through or have been going through with the Eclipse. I'll just give you sort of a, a very brief explanation as to why. I'm not done with it, so please, like, no spoilers, although I know I'm the last person on earth to read this. I'm on page 102. Santiago just fell in love with some girl at the water fountain at the oasis that they're at. The part that struck me, and I actually read it the night of the eclipse after like this horrendous day that I had had, it was the part in the book where Santiago is just done his time at the crystal shop and comes to this realization he thought he had been saving up to cross the desert to go to the pyramids and still finds out how far away he is. What the realization he comes to is sort of remembering his quest and thinking he's kind of sort of beating himself up for potentially wasting this time at the crystal shop when he could have been doing xyz and then he comes to this realization where he's like you know this many miles closer to i mean the way that they're describing it in the book is like his his treasure is at a physical location the pyramids but i'm not even done with the book but for me it's like a an allegory to sort of spiritual development and that you think maybe you've wasted your time on something but really every experience no matter how you perceive it positively or negatively is not wasted time because it's getting you closer than you were before even if it doesn't feel that way i hope that made some sense but it's like i, I read the right passage at the right time so in terms of astrology i recently listened to a lecture by a medical astrologer kind of like the health and medical applications of astrology by i think her name is rebecca gordon it was one of the free public lectures through nightlight astrology which let me bracket because i'm going to get to that in a minute but that really piqued my interest, that talk. I ended up getting her book, which she co-authored um, with someone I'm blanking on the name of. 
And then I was scrolling through my Instagram feed and someone I follow, I'm, I'm almost sure it was Housewitch actually, the metaphysical shop in Salem that I enjoy going to a lot. They had referenced or linked to a medical astrologer, the body astrologer. I think her name is Claire. And so I've been following her content this month and she's like my new girl crush. I'm so into what she's doing. I think she's a licensed acupuncturist. She has been studying astrology for a number of years. I've been like pouring over all of her videos on her website. And then what she also does is she has a subsidiary of the body astrologer called Moon RX. And it's basically a workout program aligned with the lunar cycles, which I think is a really cool idea. Um, it's a subscription-based thing. I think it's $13 a month. I'm considering joining to try out the workouts. She does post some free ones as well. This is sort of related to a broader discussion about astrology that maybe I should just do a whole video on, which is that I think uh, astrology can seem so overwhelming uh, because it is overwhelming. It's a huge, huge, huge topic, really, and there are so many people doing astrology in so many different ways, and I think that it's really, really challenging to parse out what makes sense for you without feeling overwhelmed, because in effect, astrology is another language, and you have to learn another language. So to that effect, I made the decision in late July, early August, that I wanted to embark on an astrology apprenticeship with Adam Ellen Boss, who is the astrologer behind Nightlight Astrology. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why I decided to pursue this approach. Um, it was the first time I had encountered an astrologer who read under whole sign houses as the house placement system. It was just a reading that struck me in a way that really no other astrological material had ever struck me before. This month, I am starting a two-year apprenticeship program to learn classical Hellenistic astrology. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't have any intentions of being a professional astrologer the way one might think you would um, to undertake something like this. It was more just sort of something I felt called to pursue for my own um, edification, to be honest, and it's it's prompted by the fact that as I've increasingly gotten interested in astrology, I've become increasingly dissatisfied with a lot of the astrological forecasting that I see for the most part. Now, there are astrologers that I resonate with, but for the most part, I just started feeling, it's not even that I was dissatisfied with them, it's that I started feeling dissatisfied with the broad framework, and I wanted the ability and skill to be able to drill down for myself and understand all the intricacies of my chart. Beyond that, be able to understand themes more collectively. Yeah, I wasn't even really intending to make like a formal announcement that that's what I was doing, but astrology, classical Hellenistic astrology and whole sign house astrology has been a huge favorite. The body astrologer also uses whole sign houses, I believe, and yeah, I just think she's rad. So those are my astrology recommendations for the month, and I hope that you will be excited to follow along on my astrology journey. As I mentioned, music was excellent for me this month. I wanted to let you know what I felt was sort of my theme song of the total solar eclipse. And it's a Florence and the Machine track. I used to listen to a lot of Florence and the Machine around like 2009, 2010. But right around the eclipse, her song Rabbit Heart popped into my head and I like watched the video and I read the lyrics and it just felt very poignant. And I think it's because, I don't know, I feel like there's a theme of Leo uh, astrologically in that song, the need to be brave, um, the need to kind of like step into your own out of the shadow and cultivate bravery that just felt very, very poignant with what this eclipse um, lit up, I guess, for me and, and for the collective as well. And then I'll have a whole playlist linked for you below. There's one other very like mellow, chill track that randomly popped up on shuffle uh, when I was, I was cooking one night and I was listening to uh, one of Mark Farina's Mushroom Jazz compilations who if you want just some really beautifully curated, like chill hop, jazzy, amazing music, I recommend all of Mark Farina's Mushroom Jazz compilations. But one track um, 
by Dave Warren and Julius Pop called Seems to Know made me melt into an Amelie puddle, which is how I always describe music making me feel. And then several house tracks that I have I have played a couple of gigs in August and I played several of these tracks out and they went over really well. Um, in particular, one by Saint Germain called Sitting Here, the At Jazz remix. It was actually, um, it came out on a record, I think in 2016, 2015 or 2016. It's probably like my favorite track of the summer. I would love to hear any like feedback you guys have on the music if you listen to it. Uh, if it resonates with you, if you like it, if you want other sort of music recommendations, let me know. You know, with moving into Patreon and stuff, I, I want to explore the possibility of recording live sets or just doing more with the music component of my channel because, yeah, I'm just feeling inspired to share more, more facets of La Morée La Musique. Okay, my battery is about to die and I am sweating, like hardcore, it is so hot. So I'm going to hop off, but everything will be listed and linked below as always. I would really appreciate you considering a donation on Patreon. I don't like to sell myself at all, but I'm kind of having to a little bit to get this thing off the ground. Um, thank you so much for your ongoing support with everything that I do here. And I will look forward to seeing you guys in another video very soon, next week, maybe midweek. Let's see. Let's see what I can get together. Bye.